Hello students, this is the final part of chapter metals and non-metals. In this uh, video, we are going to study about occurrence and extraction of metal. So we have been talking about uh, metals for past three videos, but where do the metals occur in our nature? Where do we get our metals from? So gold in nature is present in its pure form mostly because it is non-reactive it does not want to react with any of the other chemicals and iron is present in iron oxide so we have to purify it to form pure iron and sodium is present in sodium chloride students so where do you think sodium chloride is found it is found in our sea we have uh, full of uh, C dissolved in such salts known as sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, so, so on. So we can extract it from sodium chloride. Now there are three main definitions which you need to remember. The elements or compounds okay, which naturally occur in the earth's crust is known as minerals. So they might ask you the definition of minerals. So it is very simple students. You can find most of our elements in the earth's crust, but we can find some of them in some places. These particular metal, high percentage of these particular metals are found in our ores. So you can see the definition here. Minerals which contain a very high percentage of a particular metal and the metal can be extracted profitably. Okay, these min minerals are known as ores and ores are not purely metals. So they have some impurities such as soil, sand. So these soil and sand particles are known as gang particles. Pay attention to the Spelling here G A N G U E. Register today at KLM Institute for free online classes, revisions, doubt clearance, private online and offline classes, Olympiad exams, and win prizes, scholarships, and much more. So now you already know the reactivity series such as uh, our potassium and sodium are high in the reactivity series and silver gold is present low in our reactivity series. So we will classify it into metals of high reactivity, metals of medium reactivity and metals of low reactivity. Why do we do this? Because their uh, extraction methods are different. Here we can see here here is a basic picture metals of high reactivity can be extracted by electrolysis and metals of medium reactivity are used uh, extracted using reduction using carbon these are mostly found in their native state we have to separate the gang particles that's all now we will see one by one step by step how do we uh, extract our metals so first we will look into the metals of high reactivity. We will do electrolysis of the molten ore. I will tell you what it is. Then we get our pure metal. Metals of medium reactivity are found in two forms depending on the uh, place where you find it. It is either a carbonate ore or a sulphide ore. If it is a carbonate ore you stick on to calcination or if it is a sulphide ore you do roasting in the end you get oxide of the particular metal which you are uh, calcinating or roasting so then you need to reduction you need to do the reduction of metals what is reduction students you need to remove the oxygen we get an oxide suppose cuo you get copper oxide so you need to remove the oxygen to form Cu that is copper. Then we will go on to purification of metal. Mediums, uh, metals of low reactivity are mainly found as sulphide, sulphide ores. We will do roasting 
and we will get metal but the metal is containing lot of imp impurities so we will do an refining process no so now we will do an extraction of metals of low reactivity so our mercury is present in cinnabar form this mercury ore is known as cinnabar mercury sulfide is its chemical formula hgs it is roasted students it is uh, burnt in the presence of air so oxygen reacts with it and it forms mercury oxide and it also releases so2 gas now on further heating this mercury oxide releases the oxygen and we will get pure mercury now our copper sulfide is also one such example we will heat it and we will get copper oxide also we will get sulfur uh, sulfur dioxide then on further heating we can get our pure copper we will also get a lot of by products such as sulfur dioxide you can see the color of these ore students mercury sulfide is red in color and pure mercury is somewhat silverish in color also you know the color of pure copper right and see the color of copper sulfide that is copper ore it is completely different so you can tell metals when they react with other substances they change tend to change their properties now let us move on to the metals of medium reactivity the metals here can be found either in sulfide ores or carbonate ores i have already told you this so if it is sulfide ore it is very simple we just need to do roasting on upon roasting we get their respective oxide here we are taking an example of zinc sulfide we are roasting zinc sulfide so it is reacting with oxygen and it is producing zinc oxide we are also getting sulfur dioxide and how do we simplify these uh, zinc oxide or other metal oxides that we will study in the next part carbonates when we have a carbonate ore we go to do a calcination process so what is calcination students calcination is burning a metal ore without the presence of oxygen it is known as calcination so we have our zinc carbonate what happens when you burn it without oxygen we get the same product that is zinc oxide but we get co2 as the by product so we have co3 so only one oxygen remains in the zinc and co2 is liberated outside so zinc oxide is our products from both the roasting and calcination process now we need to remove that oxygen so what is removing of oxygen if an atom or a compound loses oxygen it is known as reduction so we need to add a reducing agent here we are using carbon so carbon has affinity towards oxygen so it will take oxygen and carbon will run away with oxygen leaving zinc behind we want zinc students so we are getting our product and our carbon is getting oxygen we are uh, getting a by product known as carbon monoxide so this is how we react uh, extract our metals with medium reactivity but there is a uh, not only one reducing agent you can use other reducing agents also such as sodium calcium aluminum so what are these students these are the metals of high reactivity so these metals of high reactivity has affinity towards the oxygen so if like carbon these metals also want to be in oxide form so these want oxygen so metals of medium reactivity such as manganese which is mn so we found we find it in manganese oxide so manganese oxide when reacted with aluminum it is heated and it is it forms aluminum trioxide you can see here 
and manganese is uh, present separately it also releases a lot of heat student and this is uh, what we take use of so here you can see in the picture if there are cracks in our railway track we need to weld it but we cannot weld it in our normal process we use something called as thermite process or thermit process we use another such metal of medium reactivity known as iron iron oxide is reacted with aluminium so in this process a lot of heat is present uh, liberated so here you can see fe is present in which physical state students i guess you missed it in the manganese also it is present in the liquid state that is molten state imagine a uh, uh, iron in its molten state is very hot that amount of heat is liberated also again we are getting our aluminum oxides we are getting lot of heats that heat that's why we are using this process for our welding process now we will move on to our last metal such as high reactivity metals we know high reactivity metals such as potassium sodium and these require a lot of energy to separate them because they want to react and stay in the octate form i have explained you the ionic bond between the sodium and calcium i hope you remember if you have any doubts please check out the video the links will be in the description here whatever the cathode and anode is present we get sodium or pure sodium at the cathode but it is not mixed in water students sodium chloride we will take a huge bucket of sodium chloride we will heat it till it melts so in its molten state we will conduct this electrolysis here we will get our sodium and at anode we will get our chloride ions why do why is that students because chloride is negatively charged so it is attracted to anode and sodium is positively charged so it is attracted to cathode so this is the extraction of high reactivity metals give your imagination wings if you are willing to write something what are you waiting for share your ideas and thoughts let your ideas reach out to millions get your articles published through our blogs for free so students after all this uh, purification and extraction we won't get a pure metal so we will do something known as elo electrolytic refining so we will take a cathode what is this cathode cathode is a pure metal we will take copper for an example here we are adding pure copper okay pure copper and here we are adding impure copper okay whatever the metal we are extracting that we are adding as anode so in the solution side we are adding acidified copper sulfate so whatever metal you use you use respective chemicals in the electrolyte when you turn on the electricity what happens is all the pure elements which is in the impure particle impure anode gets transferred to cathode it sticks to cathode and it is accumulated there when it is getting accumulated there all the impurities present in the uh, anode is is let down it is sink to the bottom these impurities is known as anode mud so which of the metals can be refined in such way you can refine copper zinc tin nickel silver gold etc all the heavy metals we can refine it like this so that was about extracting and refining metals now we will go on to our corrosion so i have already spoken to you about corrosion in the chemical reactions chapter 
so we know that silver get tarnished and copper also gets corroded so silver forms silver sulfide students and copper forms copper carbonate you can see the color of these both it is black in color whereas silver is silver in color and copper forms bluish or greenish carbonates also we know the rusting of iron it is very significant nowadays rusting of iron needs two chemicals that is water and oxygen to make sure that it requires two molecules we will do an experiment we will take three test tubes and we will put the same number of iron nails we will first uh, we will add few am some amount of water in the test tube a and we will let all the oxygen inside we will add the nails you can see after few days it gets rusted now we will boil the water and we will boil the distilled water so there is no amount of dissolved air and we will add water we will add nails after that we will add oil which prevents any transfer of oxygen in the water you can see after few days that it does not get rusted or you can keep the air and uh, you can add any drying agents so that no water molecule is reacting with it with lot of oxygen also it does not get rusted so it requires both water and oxygen to form iron hydroxide or it is commonly called as iron oxide so this is the reaction students so you don't need to remember it but how do we prevent it because if you make something it it uh, if it gets rusted it loses it all its ability and its shine so you can either paint it it is the most uh, cheap method we can oil it and grease it greasing where do we use we use it in cycle students you all uh, always uh, you should grease your cycle chains so that it does not get rusted and galvanization that is a method of protecting steel or iron from rusting by coating them with thin layer of zinc students so all the commercial products of construction house construction whatever we get sheets and so on these are galvanized iron or galvanized steel so zinc prevents from corrosion iron from corrosion or we can make alloy students this is very important because it is not only preventing it from rusting but it changes the chemical properties of a particular metal we can see here alloy making or make uh, alloying is defined as an alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or a metal or a non metal so you can use you can take a metal and you can add a metal another metal or another non metal to it that is known as alloying for example what are the advantages of an alloying why we should do alloying if we take iron majority of it is iron we will heat it okay and we will add heated nickel and chromium to it that is a product we get a product known as stainless steel which is harder than regular iron and it does not get rusted and if you add iron to molten molten iron to carbon that is we just add 0.05% of this carbon to iron much harder iron is formed if you see you, such as uh, normal regular iron in its pure form nowhere it is used it is either alloyed or it is galvanized or it is painted so that is why we need alloys so other alloys such as amalgam so any alloy made from mercury is known as amalgam so this youtube channel called nile red has 
a beautiful video on it this is the product he got from mixing aluminum and mercury please check out the channel if you are uh, interested and also other metals such as copper is alloyed with zinc to form brass and copper with tin is formed bronze you can know about the chemical properties or physical properties of uh, alloy is very different from the metals in its pure state you know copper wires are a very good conductor of electricity but these alloys are not good conductors of electricity and also it is rust free brass is rust free and bronze is little bit rust free also lead and tin uh, alloy is made between lead and tin known as solder we use the uh, solder in welding or electric circuit making so this is all about alloy students so students our capital delhi has kutub minar and in front of the kutub minar there is this iron pillar shown in the image it is built around 16000 years ago if not more it is made of iron but has not rusted so indian iron workers had developed a method to prevent rusting of iron it is already huge it is 8 meters high it more weighs more than 6 tons that is 6000 kg so this is a wonder that uh, scientists have been researching from a very long time so, and that is all about metals and non metal thank you students have a great time